Sitting beside a campfire, staring into the burning pyre, you may have pondered over the nature of that fire. Why is it so appealing? What are these flames made of, and why do they have different colors? Does fire have a chemical composition like every other entity on the planet? Well, in answer to that last one, fire has no unique chemical formula. Fire is nothing but the outcome of a chemical reaction commonly known as combustion. The two main components of fire are fuel and an oxidizing agent or oxidizer. Fuel is a substance that loses electrons or accepts oxygen atoms, whereas an oxidizer is a material that provides those oxygen atoms or accepts the electrons. This process of transferring electrons from the oxidizing agent to the fuel is known as oxidation, which is essentially combustion. One of the most common oxidizing agents is oxygen, due to its relative abundance on the planet and the two valence electrons in its outermost shell. But it's not the only oxidizing agent. Flames are the visible portion of the fire and mainly consist of gases such as carbon dioxide, water vapor, oxygen, nitrogen, and fly ash. The color of the fire can provide information on what is being burned. The light produced by different elements being burned comes off as different wavelengths and therefore appears as different colors to our eyes. As mentioned earlier, oxygen plays the role of an oxidizer in a combustion reaction, but other chemical species can replicate that role as a possible substitute for oxygen. Monopropellants are fuels that do not require an oxidizer for combustion because the oxidizer is bound to the molecule of the fuel itself. For instance, consider a system of hydrogen and oxygen in which the hydrogen acts as the fuel and the oxygen functions as an oxidizer. Such a system would be called a bipropellant system, as the reaction would require a separate chemical species as an oxidizing agent, as opposed to a monopropellant system, which does not require any external oxygen for combustion. Hypergolics are combinations of two materials that ignite spontaneously without the need for an ignition source, so they don't require any oxygen. As a result, they can be readily controlled, which makes them ideal rocket propellants. Now, what about nuclear reactions? Visually, they produce the same results as fire and take place on faraway stars like our sun, although there's no oxygen there. What is happening on these stars is called a nuclear fusion reaction. In such reactions, two light atomic nuclei combine to form a heavy atomic nucleus, which releases an enormous amount of light and heat energy. Fusion is what powers the sun. The reaction is quite similar to combustion, except hydrogen serves the role of oxygen. Oxygen remains of prime importance on planet Earth for many processes, including the burning of fire, owing to its abundance and efficiency. For the past one million years, atmospheric oxygen levels have been declining, but not enough to trigger any significant problems for life on Earth. However, the human race has plenty of other problems we desperately need to solve.